Several months ago, I decided to take on the challenge of setting up an all-in-one reef tank system. The goal was to create a thriving mini reef ecosystem that could sustain itself with just a little maintenance. What I didn't realize was how quickly things could get out of balance and how much fine-tuning it would take to keep everything running smoothly. This tank and innovative marine mini 40 fusion is now stable and flourishing. But before that, in this video, I'll walk you through my routine for keeping the tank healthy, managing water changes, and maintaining a perfect environment for my fish and corals. The stars of this tank are my two clownfish, Nemo and Asher, who have been with me since the beginning. Alongside them are Candy, my yellow candy hogfish, Comet, a yellow fin fairy wrasse, Pika, the tail spot blenny, and two very hardworking shrimp. Runny, my super friendly cleaner shrimp, and Bubbles, the blood red fire shrimp that never comes out of its cave. They've all found their little niches in this tank, but keeping them happy and healthy requires some careful planning especially when it comes to maintaining water quality. The tank was falling apart, hair algae everywhere, brown algae covering the glass, and cyanobacteria choking the life out of everything. I had to act fast if I was going to win this battle. Here I'm scraping off the dreaded brown algae off the glass. <coughs> as for hair algae, I plucked out as much as I can with my hands, and then I went on to using a brush. One of the key parts of keeping a reef tank healthy is water changes. I aim for a 10 to 15% water change every week, which helps remove excess nutrients and keeps the water parameters stable. Unless your tank is crashing indefinitely like my tank here, it's ideal to do small water changes rather than large ones. Oh, I forgot to mention, I use the old water to rinse my mechanical filtration, carbon, and biomedia in the sump so I don't kill off good bacteria. I've also added a filter pad under my sponge filter because I don't have a filter sock. I was late in the game for this next one, but I needed something to maintain salinity and the annoyance of evaporation. For this, I rely on my 15 gallon ATO reservoir connected to a Tunzi 5017 ATO system. This setup automatically tops off the tank with fresh RODI water as it evaporates keeping salinity levels stable. Before I fired up my roadie, I made sure to check, clean, and replace the roadie filters because they were past due. Even if my TDS meter shows zero, that doesn't necessarily mean the water is 100% pure. TDS meters only measure dissolved solids, so things like chlorine, chloramine, and other chemicals might still be in the water and don't pick up bacteria or algae that can develop in stagnant water. Now I'm flushing the roadie system for about 10-15 minutes after swapping out the filters. Lastly, I added Purigen. It removes organic waste, keeps your water crystal clear and helps control nitrates and phosphates to prevent algae growth. Plus, it's reusable and doesn't strip away essential elements for your corals. In a reef tank, even a small failure can lead to disaster. I've learned that the hard way. That's why having the right equipment is everything. For circulation, I use an Ecotech Marine MP40 and MP10. These power heads create strong random water flow, which is essential in a reef tank. The movement mimics the natural ocean currents, preventing dead spots where debris and waste could accumulate. The flow also helps deliver nutrients to the corals and remove waste from the fish. The MP40 handles the heavier flow for the main part of the tank, while the MP10 provides gentler movement around the rock structures. It creates a dynamic environment, and you can really see how the fish thrive in the natural current. Now here's the fun part, keeping the MPs clean. Every week I take them apart, scrub off all the gunk and build up, and get them running like new. It's a bit of a routine, but trust me, clean pumps mean a happy, thriving reef. On the filtration side, I use the Tunzi 9004 skim. It may be small, but it's a powerhouse when it comes to removing organic waste before it turns into harmful toxins like ammonia and nitrates. This skimmer is the frontline defense, keeping my water crystal clear. I'm meticulous about cleaning the collection cup every week, and I give the entire skimmer a deep clean every two to three months. For the lights, I use an Ecotech Marine XR15. Lighting is crucial for coral growth and color. This unit delivers the perfect spectrum for both. The tank's light Lighting is set on a schedule that mimics the natural day and night cycles, which helps regulate the behavior of the fish and invertebrates. I had a car interior duster on hand, so I used it to clean the light fixture. Having a can of dust off duster also comes in handy for reaching those tighter spots and giving the light fixture a quick, thorough clean. I initially used the 5th generation XR30, running it at 60%. Currently, I have the 6th generation XR15 set at 100%. While the spread of the 6th generation has improved significantly, I'm considering switching back to the XR30. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The next one is my cheapest yet most productive investment for this tank when it comes to filtration. I got this off of eBay for about $9 and I use it to grow macroalgae, which provides natural filtration that helps with nutrient export by absorbing excess nitrates and phosphate. 
crates. It also houses my copa pot. Now back to my tank friends. Nemo and Asher have never hosted an anemone, even though I brought them from a store where they were happily hosting a bubble tip. I set them up with their very own red bubble tip anemone thinking they'd settle right in. No. Nope. Since then, I've had to remove the anemones. I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. Adding candy was a real gamble. I've heard plenty of horror stories about hogfish causing chaos in tanks. So far, he's only been mildly a pecker to my fire shrimp and Comet, but if he keeps up, I'll have to switch him over to my new setup that's coming soon. Comet might be bigger, but he's a total softy. He started out looking like the tank's boss, but now he's reserved. Even letting me pet him during feeding time, he's got such a calm temperament. Pika spends most of his time perched on the rocks, acting like the tank's watchful guardian. Uh -huh. Other than that, he doesn't do much, and despite my best efforts, he refuses to eat anything I offer. Yet somehow he's been surviving on algae for over a year. What? Bubbles is a total recluse. Getting her on camera is next to impossible. But my absolute favorite has to be Runny, the cleaner shrimp. The moment my hands get near the water, he rushes over to clean it off. Watching him work is endlessly entertaining. Now meet the rest of the crew. I've got dwarf yeah, zebra hermits and some giant I don't know the name hermits That's hanging out nice. at the bottom, always foraging and cleaning up the tritus. They're the silent cleaners of the tank. Nothing too exciting, but essential. As I edited this video, I picked up four scarlet hermit crabs from my local store. They settled right in and got to work immediately. I've also added some snails. Three coney snails, three nazarius snails, and one turbo snail. If he can upright himself, he's a trochus. If not, he's just an ass. Kriya. I also decided to bring home an emerald crab we named Chomper. Here he is, saluting to those who wear the same color. As for the corals, I've got a bunch of LPS on frag plugs, including a holy micromusa, a WWC Diablo plate coral, favias, and zoanthids scattered everywhere. My favorite? Definitely the exospear zoas. All my SPS are up top, soaking in the most light since they're the trickiest to keep. I didn't have much luck with them before, so naturally, I added 11 more frags. Joking aside, being a little excessive is part of this hobby. Despite some ups and downs and a steep learning curve, I've somehow managed to keep this reef and balance. Now, it's more than just a tank. It's a living, breathing ecosystem right in my living room. From the vibrant corals to the quirky behavior of my fish, this reef has become a source of joy and wonder. It's funny how a hobby can turn into something that not only keeps me entertained, but also has the family constantly stopping by to watch. Even after all the challenges, there is something deeply rewarding about creating and maintaining this miniature slice of the ocean. Every time I look at it, I'm reminded that all the hard work is totally worth it. Please follow me on my next video on how I kept a thriving LPS system in less than 30 days. Why, thank you. Subscribe.